Hello there and welcome to Luminar Neo All Sliders Explained, the show where we describe and explain you every single slider in this powerful photo editing application. Now if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors and I'm a creator and founder of Clever Photographer. Now before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, we're going to give you our own and very popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So stay until the end so you can get your own copy. The second, if you want to follow us along, make sure you head into the description, follow the link there and get your sample files before we're going to start. If you don't own Luminar Neo, you can also follow the link in the description and use our own discount code Clever Photographer. That way you get additional 20% off and you can get your own copy. And finally, we want to ask you to like and comment on our videos and also follow our channel so we can keep creating content like this. In today's tutorial, we're going to look at the clone tool in Luminar Neo. The clone tool is effective when you need to copy exact detail and color from one part of an image to another area. It can be used to remove unwanted objects on the image, but also replicate objects and add them to new location on the image. In this tutorial, we're going to look at the tool and explain you each of its sliders. After that, we're going to discover the best technique to remove and add objects with this tool. And finally, at the end, I will explain you the difference between the Erase tool and Clone tool. So as you can see, I'm already in Luminar Neo and we are in an edit module. We have this kind of strange image, but we're going to be using it for the purpose of explaining each of the sliders. Now, if you want to download the sample files I'm going to be using today, all you need to do is to jump into the description of the video, follow the link there that will bring you into our Dropbox account and you can download the sample files there. So first of all, where is the clone tool? Well, for this, we need to go to our main toolbar on the right side of the screen and scroll all the way down to the bottom to the professional section. Here at the bottom of the section, you will see the clone tool. Once you click on it, it will open and we will get three sliders. Together with the sliders, you also get the message on the screen saying click to set the source. This will basically letting you know that you need to set the area that you want to clone or copy. For us in this example, we're going to be trying to copy this cloud. So let's just click in a corner of the cloud. So we start nicely from the side. Let's just make one click. And once we do that, you can see that the message disappeared. Now, when I hover over the white area, you can see what I'm copying. It's basically the area of a side of the cloud. Now let's go back to our sliders. The first one is a size. It's adjusting the size of the brush we're using for the cloning and stamping. At this moment, we get this size and we can make it really small. So then we have a really small part or we can make it really big and then we get the bigger part. Now you can also use the bracket keys on your keyboard to adjust the size of the cloning brush. After that, we have the softness. So once again, let's have a look at what we copying or cloning now. You can see how soft are the edges. And when I adjust the softness, so let's bring it all the way down, you can see how defined is the area. Now, depending on the project, depending what you're trying to do, you maybe want your softness to be really small, somewhere around zero. But most of the time, you really want the softness to be all the way up. Finally, we have the amount of strength. So again, when we cloning something, we can have full strength. So when we click now, it will basically paste everything that is there. Or we can adjust the strength. So let's say that we go somewhere around 20. And now when I continue brushing, you can see how very little is pasting over. So again, depending on the project and what you're trying to do, you may want to bring the strength a little lower, but in most cases, you will want it all the way on 100%. So we have a size, softness, and strength. So let's reset the tool. We can do that by clicking on this little reset tool in the right top corner of the tool and start from beginning. Now, moving on back to our image, we again need to set the source. So let's select the cloud. And now let's paste the cloud to this part of the image. We have everything set right. We can increase the size if we want to, but we keep the softness on 100 and strength on 102. So let's just paste the cloud here. 
So very gently, we're going to keep brushing. And you can see while I'm brushing on this part of the image, how the other part is also copying that specific area of the image. So when I'm brushing over, you can see how well that works. When I keep brushing, you can see really in a few seconds, I have created an additional cloud. Now that is the case when I'm trying to add a new element or new object to the image. But what about if I want to hide it? So let's reset the tool again by going into the Reset Tool option on the top right corner of the tool. And this time, instead of selecting the source of the cloud, we want to select the actual sky. So let's say that we're going to start somewhere around here. And now we're just going to brush over the cloud and basically hide the cloud away from the sky. So you can take as much time as you want to. This is just an example, but I'm sure you're getting the idea of what we're trying to do here. You can keep painting and basically hide the cloud away. So with the clone tool, once again, you have a two options. You can copy and paste the element to add new element into the picture, or you can hide the element or object by sampling the area that you want to replace it with. So this was a very simple example that helped us to understand each of the sliders. And now it's time to look at the real example where we can see how we can use this tool to add or remove elements from the image. For this, we need to go back to our catalog module. And here from the sample files, we have this food image. Click on it to select it and then bring it into edit module. So as you can see, I specifically chosen this image as I want to show you how we can remove or copy and duplicate different elements around. So let's start. And for example, let's say that we want this leaf on another part of the image. Well, for this, we need to go into our main toolbar. Once again, scroll all the way down and open the clone tool. Once we do that, we have our sliders ready. And once again, we're getting the message to select the source. So we are trying to clone or copy and paste the leaf. So we're going to click at the beginning of the leaf. Now we have the top of the leaf selected. Let's have a look. When we move it around, you can see it. And what we want to do really is just adjust the size of the brush to make it a little smaller. You can use the bracket keys or once again, we can use the size slider on our tool here. So let's have a look, maybe somewhere around 55. Now we want to paste the leaf, let's say about here. So we just going to click and then very gently start to paint the leaf into its position. So let's have a look at it. When we take our time, you can see we also pasting the actual shadow and it's looking great. So that's how you paste or copy and paste new elements and objects around the image. So that's the first purpose of this tool. Now, after you do that, after you copy and paste or clone and stamp one element, I suggest you to close the tool and then apply it to the image. So this way you have one clone tool for this element. So if I'm going to make any mistake after, or you're going to make any mistake, you will be able to come back into the edits and adjust them separately. So let me show you what I mean. So let's close the clone tool. And this way, when we go into the edits tab, we have the clone tool for our leaf here. Now we go back to the tools. We scroll all the way down and open the clone tool again. And now let's say that I want to take this piece of the pepper here and paste it somewhere else. So again, we need to select the source. So let's just click on the size of it. And let's have a look just somewhere into the similar kind of location, just here, paste it right in here. So this is it now, it's done. And once again, I could close the clone tool. But let's say I'm not going to do that. Let's say I'm going to continue painting here and I do all sorts of wrong things. So let's say I paint over here. Because there is still no undo, redo option in Luminar Neo at this point, now, there is no other thing I can do other than just reset the tool. And if I wouldn't have initially closed the tool after the leaf, it would also remove the leaf. Meaning that really the best option and the best approach right now is to replace certain area, close the clone tool, and then open it again and start with a new area, element, or object. So this is it. So now I'll show you how we can take an object and paste it into another area.
But how about if I want to remove an object, if I want to remove certain part of the image? Well, for this, we can also use the clone tool. And let's say that we want to remove all of these peppers here. So let's zoom in. We can do that by using Command or Control Plus. Let's get a little closer. And let's say we're going to start with this area right here. So we need to click to set the source. So in our case, this area right here. Now I think we are copying or cloning too big part or too big area. So again, let's adjust the size of our brush. Use the bracket keys or use the size slider. And now let's just see, making sure that we kind of trying to duplicate similar texture. And once we're happy, we just paint over the area. Let's have a look. We need to make sure that we painting. And then at the same time, we paint over this area here. Similarly with this part here. Now, as you can see, when I go over, we pasting the area from here. But how do we adjust the position of our cloning area? Well, it's really simple. We're just going to hold Alt or Option. And our mouse will again turn to the source area. So we can now select whichever area we want. So let's say, let's say that we're going to use this one right here. And now we're going to be cloning this area right here. So we can just very simply paint over it. Now, of course, you can see I made a mistake. So we're going to select area a little further. Hold Alt or Option, and now just paint over all of this to make it disappear. Now, this is quite easy texture. Some textures are not that simple, and you need to work around. However, I'm sure you're getting what we're trying to do here. Let's just continue. Again, Alt or Option, and you can see that once you get comfortable with the tool, you can really work very fast here. You don't need to waste any time. Again, similarly here, all the option, I'm selecting which area I want to clone or copy and paste. Again, made a little mistake there. If you want, you can constantly keep adjusting the size of your brush together with the softness. And similarly, I have a last piece here. So let's clone this area here. I'm again holding all the option. And let's adjust the size of my brush. I want it quite small. And let's just paint over this. Now, and that's about it. Now, there are some areas which maybe still need additional fixing, but I'm sure you're getting what we're trying to do here. So let's zoom out. And for the final part, let's take the garlic and copy and paste it to another location. So let's close the clone tool. So this way we have a separate clone tool for the removal here. Let's open it. So we have a new one for the garlic. Again, start from the side and let's just choose where we want to paste it. Quite often, what you want to do is to try to select similar background, adjust the size of your brush, and let's say that we're going to paste it right here. Very gently, let's start to paint the garlic in. You don't want to go too far out of the object because then you're going to be copy and pasting new textures from the background. But I think just something like this is actually looking quite cool. And it's looking like it's meant to be there. So there you have it. This is how you add elements, how you remove elements. Also with the Alt or Option, how you adjust your source area. And this is how you use the clone tool. And finally, before we're going to finish, I want to quickly cover the difference between the clone tool and erase tool. On a purpose, I left it towards the end because I believe that by now you understand the difference anyway. The difference between the clone tool and erase tool is, of course, the main one that you can copy and paste new elements or objects with the erase tool. And also when it comes to removing elements or objects, when it comes to erase tool, it uses the AI technology. And when you replace something or erase something, it try to replace it with whatever it thinks is the best, the texture, detail, background, whatever it thinks fits the best. Where with the clone tool, you have a full control over what you're going to replace the area with, which detail, which texture, or which background you're going to use. So now it's time to get your own Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. All you have to do is to head to our website cleverphotographer.com slash Luminar gift and get it right now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a fun and I hope you learned something new. Please don't forget to follow our channel and also check out our other videos covering Luminar Neo. 
for today. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors, and I can't wait to see you in the next one.